Jeff, thank you everyone for your comments. All right, we're gonna fit one more talk in before lunch and then we will break for lunch. Uh, I guess it's gonna be a tag team. Um, so Terry Manolio and Jeff Ginsburg um, will give us uh, an update and a summary about this uh, Genomic Medicine Institute's colloquium. Great, good afternoon. Um, it's, uh, it's a pleasure for Terry and I to report on a meeting uh, that was held in um, June in Chicago called the Genomic Medicine Institute's Colloquium. The impetus for this um, meeting uh, was several fold. Um, coming out of early uh, uh, last summer, I think um, there was some feeling that uh, genomic medicine was really not ready for prime time and there were very few uh, true examples of genomic applications in clinical medicine and certainly coming out of the um, strategic planning for uh, NHGRI. Um, there's a noticeable blob of activity beyond 2020 that is meant to um, improve the, the effectiveness of healthcare. So the, the questions really that we were asking, yeah, the questions that we were really asking were, well, how are we actually going to go from where we are today with our understanding of genome biology and genome information? Uh, to that point where we are in, uh, affecting uh, healthcare decision making and healthcare outcomes. What is actually going on in this field uh, beyond the confines of uh, NIH and, and NHGRI and what role should uh, the, uh, the NIH and, and this in institute in particular play to support uh, and accelerate the progress of genomic medicine. So uh, Terry and I co-chaired a meeting um, in Chicago uh, on June 29th. Uh, as you can see, the meeting, um, while several uh, important members of the genomic medicine community were not uh, able to attend, there was fairly widespread participation from a number of different types of entities, including integrated health uh, and healthcare delivery systems, such as uh, Intermountain Healthcare and the Geisinger Healthcare System, a number of freestanding clinics uh, practicing uh, genomic medicine, as well as uh, a number of academic medical centers and um, a number of institutes of NIH also attended. Uh, this was remarkable because no one paid their way uh, and the meeting was also um, held on a fairly short timeline. So uh, I think this just represented uh, the amount of interest in this field um, by a number of uh, key stakeholders. Uh, the tasks that we identified for ourselves to try to accomplish uh, with this meeting was to uh, really uh, paint the picture of the landscape that was going on in translational genomics and implementation research um, and try to find some synergies between the various groups. Uh, if we could, we would like to define areas where demonstration projects and quick wins for genomic, translational genomics um, could take place now or certainly in the near future and the possibility of coordinating or integrating or developing some sort of framework for sharing across these various uh, entities was something that was actively on our minds. So as part of the pre-work uh, for this meeting, and I don't expect you to read this, um, we created a template um, to try to take a biopsy from each of the attendees prior to the meeting of what they were actually working on. So we asked um, a lot of questions about the nature of their centers. Um, itself, their structures, their funding, uh, what a particular initiative either in the clinic or uh, soon to be implemented in the clinic might uh, look like. This happens to be a template that uh, Mark Williams filled out from Intermountain Healthcare. Um, we asked about uh, somewhat a lot of details about the study design, sample size, funding streams, expected outcomes, and the expected change in healthcare decision making that might ensue if this was a successful project. So we now have a very nice catalog of information. Uh, many uh, institutes and centers submitted more than one project and certainly uh, uh, we'd be happy to share this information um, uh, if, if, uh, if so desired. But just to give you a, a, a sense of the kinds of topics that were already being um, in action or already had activity uh, around them in, in various different places, there, everything from whole genome sequencing uh, to solve diagnostic dilemmas, uh, there was a lot of um, work being done on the pharmacogenomics of various classes of drugs here, antiplatelet agents and statins, uh, the use of, um, of genetic risk information or incorporating genetic risk information into risk assessment for cardiovascular disease and for several other diseases, uh, the use of somatic uh, genomic mutations in 
a variety of cancers, either to direct individuals to particular clinical trials um, that would marry their um, uh, genome variation, their tumor, to a particular uh, drug therapy or to actually treat them uh, as well. Um, there are, uh, again, numerous uh, of, these, uh, of these projects that um, we chose to at least catalog uh, and also which drove our agenda. Again, several of which were in the planning stages. There were uh, others that were looking at whole exome sequencing to define variants underlying Mendelian disorder, disorders or to, or to integrate uh, whole genome sequencing into electronic medical records and clinical decision making, preemptive pharmacogenomic genotyping, both in the pediatric population as well as adults, uh, et cetera. So I think you can see that uh, we were actually pleased to see, I should say, the heterogeneity the breadth and diversity of projects that are either already being implemented in various clinics uh, throughout the United States or in which implementation research was ongoing to see how they might be best implemented. Um, and as well, uh, uh, we noted, uh, although I didn't present the data, that uh, there were a variety of funding sources, most of which or many of which were coming from the home institutions uh, that, uh, that felt that, there, that this was the me best way to accelerate uh, getting these types of technologies integrated into clinical medicine, not through a more traditional um, federal funding mechanisms. We also asked um, each participant prior to the meeting to um, identify the key barriers uh, that st stood in the way of translational genomics at their particular institution, as well as some of the solutions and workarounds that have been achieved, and uh, more specifically to ask where NIH NHGRI might play a facilitative role in developing infrastructure and also research programs so we could begin to codify this information and develop an action plan going forward. And as you can imagine, there were a number of um, barriers, many of which we've uh, discussed here or in other fora. Um, I won't go through these in, in, exceeding, in, in exceeding detail, but I think it's clear that, um, uh, that uh, there's, a, there's a pining for evidence for clinical validity and clinical utility to foster clinical adoption. Uh, that also dovetails with the institutional and physician uh, provider acceptance of genomic medicine, emphasis on education, on standardization, on integration, on accelerating the ability to turn around genomic-based testing information for clinical decision-making, as well as uh, a myriad of issues around informed consent, uh, going out to identify at-risk family members, the ability to recruit for these studies. Uh, and also the, uh, the basis for how do we do these studies in an environment where um, the payers are not necessarily um, uh, paying for the tests and uh, there might not, there is an insufficient research funding to accelerate this agenda. So we left the meeting, I think, uh, at least or at the meeting, we, we assembled these issues and I think Terry is going to give us um, sort of the going forward planning that ensued uh, following our discussions and some follow-up committee meetings that uh, took place this summer. Maybe not. There we go. Okay. And uh, as as Jeff said, uh, uh, the main focus that we've had and tried to to uh, emphasize has has really been on sort of the right side of the diagram, particularly. Uh, this fellow here and improving the effectiveness and the implementation in healthcare. Um, you've seen this diagram many times this morning. I've, I've probably seen it uh, hundreds of times before that. I never noticed until this weekend that what's on this little keypad is actually a sequence. I am so impressed. <laughs> That's my hats off. That was really lovely. So at any rate, so this is what we're uh, we're trying to focus on. That to get all the nuggets of yes. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, um, so as Jeff described, uh, I think one of the, the main things that, that came out of uh, the Chicago meeting was a, a real appreciation of the, the vast array of things that are actually going on in sites um, uh, across the country and, and probably, you know, outside of the U.S. certainly. Um, but, but this was very helpful, and the fact that we had a number of NIH Institute representatives uh, attending, I think, helped to kind of spread that word uh, beyond. Um, at the meeting, we talked about uh, the, the need to put together some writing groups to, to kind of codify some of the things that we had learned, uh, not only in perspectives papers, but also per, potentially in some best practice guidelines. People get very nervous about the term guidelines, so maybe we'll just call it best practices and kind of leave it at that. 
Um, we also would, would like to uh, um, explore some of these topics in more depth. And so from this group, we could come up with some planning groups for workshops or conferences. And, and really a, a potential um, here that, that I think can be um, uh, realized would be to bring them into kind of a loose confederation or even a consortium for, for collaborative studies. Because there was much in common going on across the sites. I think many of the sites were surprised themselves to see how much was, was actually going on. Um, and the possibility of, of uh, uh, you know, sort of knitting that together a little bit better was, uh, was actually quite exciting. So as Jeff described, there were over 20 gen genomic medicine centers uh, that are at varying stages of implementation. Of a, a variety of projects. They're supported through a variety of mechanisms, many of them through local institutional funds um, and, and really not through NIH funding, which is, you know, we're delighted to be able to leverage efforts but also to, uh, to add to them. Um, there were a number of similar and, and potentially overlapping efforts that could benefit from some collaboration, particularly in increasing sample sizes, but also in, in reducing sort of the, the uh, invention of the wheel, uh, and a number of shared needs that, uh, that Jeff described in terms of uh, uh, barriers and, and obstacles. Uh, we felt the group would benefit from periodic interactions in some degree, albeit light, uh, of coordination or consensus building, um, with the goal being to facilitate but not to impede the work that these groups are doing. As you're aware, uh, NHGRI is, is moving very strongly into the genomic medicine uh, field, which has yet to be defined, and we, we hope to be on the cutting edge of defining it. Uh, we'd like to identify research directions and priorities, and that's been the subject of a, of a fair amount of work that's been going on since uh, the strategic plan uh, was put out and even before that was finalized. We want to promote this collaboration, stimulate investigator-initiated efforts, and also issue funding solicitations as appropriate, and those we would bring back to you, of course. Um, we'd also like to learn more about the genomic medicine centers that are, are currently um, uh, in, in place uh, and, and have our staff really learn much more about them, myself included, uh, by visiting some of them. And so those will be efforts that we'll, we'll uh, be undertaking in the next year. We felt it would also be uh, worthwhile to establish a sort of a genomic medicine working group as a subset of the council. Because this is such a new area and because it's evolving, uh, we, we really want to, to work as closely as we can with the people who are, are actually doing this work. Um, and so perhaps get a, a, a subgroup of, of them onto a, a leadership group for us that would have a rotating membership, uh, at least one council member as a subgroup of council, and that would report back to you regularly. Uh, things that that working group could do would be to identify topics for subsequent meetings or subsequent tasks that might not need uh, meetings and, and to help to plan those out, um, identify uh, uh, separate topics for, for working groups versus working groups which might be just go ahead and do it as opposed to workshops where some consensus or, uh, or broad input in the field is needed. Uh, also from these, these uh, meetings, monitor production of white papers and assist or prod uh, the production of them as needed. Uh, and also to review progress in, in a given area, um, both uh, by reviewing the literature and by talking with uh, folks that, that these folks happen to know for readiness for it being explored in subsequent uh, uh, working groups. We'd also review progress overall in genomic medicine implementation and identify gaps and opportunities and really re rely on that uh, working group to do this. Um, we'd want them to identify related efforts and to integrate them as appropriate. Uh, you pointed out to us the, the ClinVer database that's being developed by NCBI. You mentioned that uh, uh, last spring. Uh, we've since looked into that, and, and that will be um, uh, closely integrated with our efforts to develop a database of actionable variants uh, in, in an effort uh, coming up this fall. Uh, the Emerge Consortium, which was uh, refunded for a second phase uh, last spring, um, is, is heavily in, invested in clinical decision support and clinical implementation. And so working with that group will be uh, very important, particularly in pilot implementation projects. Uh, the Clinical Sequencing Exploratory Program, which, are coming, which is coming to this council, uh, has, has obviously some important elements in common uh, and will be important to integrate here. Uh, there's a trans-NIH dissemination network that Mark Williams has been working with that we want to be uh, integrating with as well. And obviously the Clinical Translational Science Awards, the CTSAs, uh, will provide a, a useful uh, uh, background and, and uh, knowledge base to, to leverage. Of the, uh, the topics that were identified uh, both in Chicago and then subsequently for um, uh, potential uh, uh, pursuit, uh, we kind of divided them into infrastructure needs and research needs. Uh, you've already heard about databases and actionable variants. That's one that's moving forward um, quite rapidly and, and will be held uh, a workshop December 1st and 2nd here in Bethesda. Uh, my colleague Aaron Ramos is leading that effort, and Rex Chisholm and uh, Mark Williams are, are co-chairing it. Collaborative demonstration projects seem to be uh, uh, 
challenges and, and opportunities to, to really bring together these various sites. So we see that as, as you know, where our uh, improving the effectiveness can really um, um, be uh, uh, brought forward. Uh, and that will most likely be in November, December of, of 2011. Uh, we're looking for dates now for, for that. And that would be essentially bringing back the group that, uh, that met in June, plus others who weren't able to make it at that time, um, more of their colleagues, et cetera, uh, and, and really see if we can get them to, to um, um, work together in, in some small demonstration or even larger demonstration projects. We uh, heard in, in June that standardization and quality control of clinical genomic testing and reporting was desperately needed. This is a, a real challenge in many of these sites as to sort of what to make of the sequencing data that they get back that often comes back in different formats. It's unclear what quality control has been done in, in each of these platforms uh, and what quality control further needs to be done. And that would probably be another uh, uh, meeting that we could help hold in the spring of 2012. We also have needs for uh, addressing policy, such as you know what exactly is needed in consents for these kinds of programs, um, what exactly are the, the CLIA requirements, and can we work with the CLIA program to uh, to make them both uh, um, uh, as protective of, of uh, patient care and patient safety as, as necessary, but as uh, little of an obstacle as as is possible. Uh, also, issues regarded to, related to re reimbursement. And obviously, education, training, and user support once we have uh, tools and, and pilot programs uh, far enough along that they can actually be used. In terms of research, uh, an overwhelming uh, need was for, for further evidence. And we, we've also heard about the, the interest uh, here earlier this morning in, in being sure that adequate evidence for using these things clinically is, is developed um, for discovery, validation, uh, for uh, determining particularly what to do with the actionable variants that are, are um, discussed in November, December, and also for identifying new actionable variants. Perhaps that could be a meeting in the fall uh, of 2012. Um, evidence development for effectiveness of genomic medicine. So it's one thing to, to look at uh, what is action, actually actionable, uh, but another to say, all right, if we start to act on those, if we start to report them back to clinicians and patients and, and we start to implement those, does it make a difference in terms of patient outcomes? Those are big studies. They're long term, but we need to, to figure out how to do them. And also we need to develop tools for genomic medicine, uh, particularly clinical decision support, clinical algorithms. Uh, much of this work is going on already, and it would be great to, to be able to bring it together a bit. Uh, and that's, there's another place where uh, we're, where we'll really uh, fit in clinically. Something that's important to avoid is meeting hell. Uh, this is a lot of meetings and, and shown down here. Oh man, the coffee's cold. They thought of everything. Um, so, so we do want to be, be sure that our, our meetings are useful. On the other hand, um, we think just bringing these, these genomic medicine centers together is a, is a very useful thing. And if each meeting can sort of have a, a focus or a theme, uh, we feel that'll be the best way to, to go forward. Whoops. Oh, darn. Can I go back? Probably not. Uh, you know, I tried. It didn't. It didn't want me to. So, forgive me while I my PowerPoint lack of skills is shown here. So, okay. Um, so. What we would propose for this fall meeting is to, as I said, broaden involvement of the relevant groups, identify some low-cost pilot projects, uh, you know, ideally uh, building on funding that these groups already have, but uh, perhaps needing a little bit of, of extra uh, to build on similar efforts across sites, uh, convene working groups and workshop planning to address um, what we found out in the, in the June meeting, uh, identify additional groups to participate. Um, we might look at, at ways to fund some of these through administrative supplements to relevant grants. Uh, that that is, has always been an effective way, and, and uh, uh, certainly we have some grants in, in this area, as do other NIH institutes. And then, as I, as I mentioned, uh, be sure that we coordinate in, in a yet-to-be-determined way with the Clinical Sequencing Consortium, which should be up and running uh, by about that time. So I think I'll stop there and take any questions. Thank you. Howard. Is there anyone, so I'm, I'm really uh, glad this is moving forward, and partly because no one else is doing it. And uh, is there someone else that, in DHHS that uh, could also be drawn into this? Because the NIH is one segment of this, but most of the names you listed up there were places that uh, interact with the NIHS, I'm sorry, with the uh, NIH, but don't, they, they, all, they report more to Center for Medicare, Medicaid Services, or other places like that. So, mm -hmm. is, is there is there someone within CMS or someone within some other aspect that should also be drawn in? Because this um, will never reach the uh, the right side of the of the graph if this doesn't happen. 
Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, so CMS is a, is a key you know, player in this, obviously, because they're so involved in the reimbursement. Um, unclear exactly who the right people to approach there or what the right stage is to approach them. We, I think we need to have a product, um, but, but getting them involved early on would be very useful, I agree. CDC with its CLIA program is critical to, to be involved, and they've actually reached out to us and, and we're working with them on, on some sequencing quality control and CLIA um, uh, definitions there. The FDA is another group um, that actually has been out in front in this in terms of defining pharmacogenetic variants. Um, and the Office of the National Coordinator for, for Health Information uh, Technology all of those groups need to be involved. Jeff and I have a, a former colleague who's went in Sean Tunis's group at that nonprofit started that is basically heavily linked. Pat Devurk is her name, have heavily linked in defining this for devices right now, and they're they've got CMS involved in their discussions, so it can be done. Sure. Um, and maybe actually that would be one avenue to get them involved. Other questions, comments, or people just hungry for lunch, or both? Well, think about it. I mean, we, Dave? I, I had the pleasure of going to that this meeting, and I must say it was it was tremendously enthusiastic and informed. I, I think you guys deserve a, a credit for putting together that meeting. It was very useful. And, and was that because you were representing Hopkins or Broad Institute? At that I was meeting? actually do, doing double duty Double there. duty, so that's why you enjoyed it so much. Oh, I could imagine. Okay, you want to...